Hey all, it's Dan back with another book review and this time I'm reviewing The Crow Wicked Prayer by Norman Partridge. Now, um, <clears throat> I almost wasn't going to do a review of this book, but I kind of changed my mind because I really think this is a really good book. Um, not just because I'm a Crow fan, and not just because it's written by Norman Partridge. Um, I'm going to tell you a little story on how I came about picking up this book. Um, I had picked up Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. And I have previously read some other Crow paperbacks. Um, I'm surprised myself that I have not reviewed um, The Crow by James O'Barr, the original graphic novel by him. Um... I thought it was okay, and I think that's why I never reviewed the graphic novel. But I'm a big fan of all the movies. I've seen every single film. I've read... This will be my third paperback in the Crow book series. And I was... I gotta say, Amazon recommendations are way better... And they really got a feel for stuff you're going to like to read versus Goodreads. Because I've had some bad luck when it comes to Goodreads recommendations. But Amazon has really done well with recommendations. So I picked this up because I saw that it was written by Norman Partridge. Of course, this is my first time ever reading Norman Partridge. Even though I had picked up Dark Harvest by him. Which I plan on reading next month in October. Um... There is a film of the same title, Wicked Prayer, but it is not a literal book-to-movie translation. It is, um... And after having read this, I can see why they chose to do what they did with the film versus the book. And it's kind of very loosely based. Like, they take the supernatural kind of magic elements from this book and kind of, you know, tried to draw that out into the film. And I can see why they did it the way they did, because they didn't have the technology, the CGI, to really do this book any justice in that film. For one, one of the characters is a shrunken head that talks. Now, I mean, they could have done it because they did something similar with Beetlejuice. I mean, they really could have done it in this book, or in the film, adaptation of this, but would it have been as good, you know, as Beetlejuice, or would it look cheesy? But I'm not going to, you know, go on and on about that. But of course, everybody, if you're familiar with The Crow, you know it's about two lovers who get killed, and then there's the vengeance, you know, trying to redeem their, or revenge their killing. The Crow respawns one of the dead lovers, so that he can avenge them. And that's basically how the crow works. But like I said, this is my first time reading Norman Partridge. And I was really impressed um, with the prose. The way this guy writes. Um, this takes place in the, the American Southwest. <clears throat> it's all over. It doesn't just stay in one state. I mean, I think it starts out in Arizona. And then they kind of bounce around. They go on a... Um, almost like... Uh, Natural Born Killers kind of road trip where they go around and it's there's two main villains well there's the three if you count the shrunken head but there's um Johnny Church and Kyra Kyra Damon uh Kyra Damon is kind of like a witch she's um this person she's out seeking to gain the powers of the crow and she we get her backstory teased out slowly along the story, but the main co uh, the main couple is Dan Cody and Letitia Harden, and uh, I thought this was so good, guys. I mean, I thought it was so good, and I was afraid of not sharing this because I'm like, this book came out almost twenty years ago, and I know sometimes you know people are just you know I'll think a book is really great and then sometimes like I'll get no views on it or just get no response. But I was like you know what this I thought that Norman Partridge is a really good writer. Um, and if you look him up if you look up his website NormanPartridge.com it's like a landscaping business now. So apparently he stopped writing 
to, to do lawns, which is really disheartening and really sad to see, because if you read the about the author in the back of this book, like Joe Lonsdale, Stephen King, and a few other authors, like Peter Straub was one of them, they high praised this guy and said how great he is and how he's going to write all these awesome books and these stories. And I wanted to share with you guys, this is my selling point. I wish I had earmarked the original passage I had read that I thought was really good, but I kind of forgot to do it. And, you know, but I'm going to read you a different one just to share with you um, something, just how I, I think this guy's writing is really good. But Dan Cody had seen her and he saw her still. Though he tried not to, Dan sometimes imagined her last moments as he drove the solitary highway. The girl kneeling on the shoulder, red dust staining her knees, counting deposit bottles that would supplement her mother's welfare checks. Her blue eyes reflecting headlights that bleached her skin white as a desert flower. Her last breath drawn deeply and held. Then a flash of pop bottles exploding like firecrackers against a black backdrop of sky and death in the form of a half ton of steel smashing through the child as easily as if she were a tumbleweed that had come head to head with a tornado. I'm going to read you one more passage because this this guy, his, his writing, I was really super impressed with the descriptors and the way he so eloquently writes out like gritty kind of passages. I knew that cowboy was your boyfriend, church struck an exultant fist dead center to his left palm. Fucking knew it, because he looks just like your type, 100% shit kicker. Church talked like he looked, a muscular, bullet-headed bastard with a clipped military haircut, a band t-shirt, and a black leather biker jacket that smelled like he'd slept in it in the last two months. To Letitia, the man looked like a Halloween costume come to life, a black leather Frankenstein, with brands and tattoos instead of stitches, piercings instead of metal bolts and clamps, a man cobbled together from personal nightmares. Now, it's just stuff like that just really made the story that much more enjoyable for me. I mean, to be honest with you guys, out of the three Crow books I've read, and this is eliminating the original graphic novel that started the movies and the books. I thought this was the best one. I rated this 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, and to be honest with you, I can't wait to get into Dark Harvest because I was so super impressed with this guy's writing. Um, I knew I was going to enjoy it because, like I said, I'm a fan of the Crow, the Crow movies. I love that whole concept of dead lovers who are killed wrongfully being avenged. I just love that concept. And I love the concept of the Southwest. And he kind of intertwines elements of Westerns. And he even, at one point in the book, he kind of mentions some of his influences, like Ambrose Bierce and a couple of other people. Like, one of them was a Western writer, who I can't remember his name off the top of my head, and another writer who I'd never heard of. And I decided to look them up. I think Stephen Crane was one of them. But I was like, I really like this guy's writing. And I, I really think it's sad that he stopped writing. I mean, I'm hoping that he maybe felt like he had written everything he wanted to write. And that's why he gave it up. Or who knows? Maybe he felt like he wasn't selling enough books. I mean, you never know. But um, I just wanted to throw this out here. That's another reason why I wanted to do this review. Because I want people to know what an amazing writer this guy was. He's still alive and kicking. And it's a shame that he's not writing anymore. Because it would be nice to see him come back and write some more stuff. I mean, there's a whole new you know, market for horror now. Um, I don't think that... You know, this guy got signed on with Tor right from the get-go. It was like he didn't... I don't know if he started out as an indie author or not, but he right from the get-go was in with the big the big leagues, you know? But I feel like there's not too much more I can say about this. Either you're a fan of The Crow and you're going to want to check this out, or maybe you've already read his Dark Harvest and you're like, hey, that sounds interesting. Let's go check out this other book by him. 
Um, but yeah, like I said, I rated this 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was one of the best Crow books I've read so far. Um, I read another one by Poppy Z. Bright, which I really like Poppy Z. Bright, and I was surprised I didn't enjoy that Crow book as much as I enjoyed this one. But it is what it is. That's all I got for you guys. For those of you in the U.S., I will have a link to Amazon for you to pick this up for yourselves. I'm going to try and see if this is on bookshop.org for those of you international folks. Um, I'm also going to throw down my coffee link if you don't mind donating a few bucks to that. I'm trying to improve my channel. Slowly creeping to 1,000 subscribers. Um, we'll see if we can get there sooner rather than later. I'm hoping to reach a thousand subs like really soon if I can. I've been doing this for a long time and it's about over time that I got that thousand subscribers and got my AdSense back. But that's all I got for you guys. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. And until next time, this has been Dan. Be good to you.